This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. gentlemen it is the lovely and attractive larry bubbles brown oh, hello larry <laughs> hello alex <laughs> it was lovely to try yes uh david tell on stage that night said you must do it well larry with your with your dust bowl good looks <laughs> <laughs> oh man did he say that on stage yeah. <laughs> oh, that, that's wonderful. Your Dust Bowl good looks. Good. Oh, good. He comes up with the greatest phrase. <laughs> I always remember Tell as one of the funniest comics around. Oh, the best, yeah. But, yeah. But uh, I think vastly unappreciated. I think for a while there he had kind of a, a cult following, but he doesn't seem to appear that much in places now, you know, like he used to. So I uh, yeah he had that uh, insomniac show on Comedy Central in the early 2000s, which got a good following, and now he's uh, he still he sold out every show he had at Cobb's. So it's, uh, yeah, no, he's he's uh, he has a he has a following is what he has, you know. He has a following. Yeah, he can make a good living doing that, but he's certainly uh, there's guys like him and Slayton that should have been more famous than they were yeah i think slayton is the biggest uh, uh the saddest thing of all in a way i mean i don't want to talk about bobby's being sad because uh, he certainly has been successful in his time but one of the best comedians alive i mean just the perfect the the perfect stand-up chris rock said he's the best club comic really he did say that okay. yeah that meant don't come close to me because i'm the best <laughs> concert comic but he did call him the best uh, uh, club comic. And he, that would be the best way to describe him. He is a club comic, you know. Yeah, I don't think he was nearly as funny on TV as he is live. Um, there is something about Bobby that doesn't translate. I don't know what it is. I mean, I watch him. I watch some of his sets that he does on TV, and they're fine, you know. But it's nothing like being there with him. Right. You know, you can't, you can't put that in a bottle. And and uh, he's he's had that problem. He's had that problem over the years. So, you know, I mean, and you're another one of those. You're another one of those comics who should have been eminently bigger. <laughs> you know, but you know, then again, you have never been a promoter. No, and you uh, know, I know guys that do really well, really, really work on that. And uh, somebody told me. Greg Barrett, I remember he uh, he really wanted to be famous, and then he got, he wrote that book. He, he's just not that into you, which became a movie. She's, he he or she's not that not into you. He, yeah, he, I think he, it's he's not. Oh, that he's into not you. that into you. Yeah, and it was a big success for some. Yeah, and then he got a show from uh, got a show from Oprah, which didn't last. And he told me he said when he got to that level, he said he realized. Getting famous is a lot easier than staying famous, and he just realized he didn't want to do that much work. You know something? He's absolutely right. You know, staying famous is much more difficult than getting there. Yeah. Yeah. But you've never been the kind of guy that promotes yourself, you know? No, I, I, I always I, feel embarrassed doing that. In fact, so I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't blame you because I've never been very good at promoting myself. You know? No, you got to be kind of like a self-loving windbag to do that, which I find kind of... Who well, the, wants to do that? Well, the name great, the, you know? the first name that comes to mind is Howard Stern. Yeah. You know, so. uh, you, King of all media. A self-promoting windbag. I mean, basically, that's the way to describe his act. You know? And I call it an act, folks. I always call... when when Like, for instance, when people talk to me about my persona on air and i i always talk to uh, talk about it as the act you know that, that's my act 
uh, the character I play on radio is is my act, and uh, so there's nothing nothing terrible about that, you know. So, but anyway, it, it's a matter of uh, a lot of people who have made it make it because they're very good at promoting themselves. Yeah, I think uh, yeah you got to wonder how guy uh, Clint Eastwood or someone that's had a career literally till their nineties. How do they do it? <laughs> I think Clint has had a career for that many years because he has changed his venues on any number of occasions. I mean, he became a director, and that gave him the ability to keep his career going behind the camera. But because he was so successful at making those movies, he could put himself and cast himself in some of them, you know, Mm -hmm. and that's why he's lasted this long. Well, I read that he became a director because when he was doing films early in his career, he thought some of the directors were so bad. He thought, oh, my God, I can do better than this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, you know, that's the way I felt about radio. I used to, uh, you know, one time I remember there was a guy, who was it? I can't remember the name. Oh, gee, I'm trying to remember his name. He was working over at, K, at KSFO. It was Gene Nelson. He was doing the morning show. And I was fired at, uh, let me see, where was I fired? I'm trying to remember where I was fired from at the time. But I was I was let go by a radio station in San Francisco. And I think I think this is the first time I got let go at uh, Live 105. And I woke up that morning. My clock radio always went off at that time of the morning. And usually, oddly enough, I didn't have a tune to Live 105. I had a tune to, I think, KSFO. And I'm li- wait. It goes off because it's the first morning I'm not working anymore. I forgot to turn it off, right? You know. And um, on comes Gene Nelson, and I'm lying there listening to this <laughs> drivel that this guy is doing. And I'm saying to myself, "Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. I'm out of work, but he's not." You know, and that was the thing that always was a mystery to me. And part of it was that Gene Nelson was a great self promoter. And I wasn't. And that's why I kept like being out of work and this thing and that thing, not because I was bad. I got big ratings and stuff like that. But because I just didn't know how to play the game. Mm-hmm. And and that's the problem. You gotta know how to play the game. And um I was never good at it. Never good at self promotion. No, I don't know. Guys like uh, George Lopez was uh, great at that. He would work so hard just promoting himself. When he had a show, he'd be uh, calling every town, the local station, hey, watch my sitcom tonight, and uh, really got to work hard to keep it up there. And Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, I mean, and there's... And no- most comics are lazy, so that's why... <laughs> well, it isn't that you're lazy. I think it's that, the, in your case, you just... you you. You don't like promoting yourself. You don't like going yeah. out there and touting how great you are. <laughs> I know. It's a, I think that's the Midwest part of me. We're kind of uh, very... But you know that. who does that the most? The people who are not as good as the rest. They somehow... Right. You see, and the and the reason why the David Tells of the world, and Larry Bubbles Brown, and the... the well, Bobby Slayton was pretty good at self-promotion. He was pretty good at self-promotion. But his self-promotion was to plug what he was doing in the clubs. And what's happened is over the years, the, the nature of the clubs have changed completely. And he fought, the reason he's not working anymore is he decided, I'm tired of trying to get jobs where they're bringing in all these young kids, you know, because they'll work cheap and uh, they, they have their own little following. So it's cheaper for them to bring them in than to bring me in, at, I don't know, I guess he used to get four or $5,000 a week, you know. So he gave up on it. He just gave up. He says, rather than take less money, he said, I'd just rather not do it at all. So, yeah. yeah. And I always found that a, a complete shame because there are guys like the David Tells and, and the Bobby Slaytons, uh, and we can name a whole bunch of others, you know. I mean, I hear that, uh, who, who was the guy that we used to always say was a genius in comedy in San Francisco? Uh, Kramer. Kramer, yeah. Yeah. Uh, not the Kramer from Seinfeld, but uh, um, uh, I'm trying to remember his first name now. See, that's where my Jeremy. Mom, Jeremy Kramer. Jeremy, Jeremy yeah. Kramer. Uh, Jeremy Kramer 
was, uh, um, in most people's minds, an absolute genius. Oh, brilliant, yeah. Just brilliant. And what's happened to Jeremy Kramer? Last thing I heard, who did I talk to? can't remember who I talked to who said he's just become a bitter old man. Really? Yeah, he's mm-hmm. just really just not not there with it, you know. Not funny anymore, just bitter. Yeah, yeah. that's not good. Well, I mean, come on, how many years has it been and he hasn't really made it big? And and the other problem you have, and you have this with people like Jeremy Kramer, Bob Rubin is another one that comes to mind, where everybody immediately says, this guy's a genius. And they hear it. And they say, think, well, you know, being a genius must pay off in making more money. <laughs> and that's not what being a genius does. You know? And I uh, I found that amazing, you know, that that you, you get these guys who are, have the word genius attached to them and they never go anywhere, you know, because they think that's their ticket to stardom. And they don't realize their ticket to stardom is, you know, blowing directors, <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, that's what it's all about, you know. I say that in a, in a euphemistic sense because really you just got to kiss everybody's ass. And you're not about ready to kiss anybody's ass, are you? No. No. And I'm not. And I, I find that uh, that I uh, I always felt I should make it on my talent too. Now I did okay, but there are guys, you know. I mean, like last year I was up for uh, the Radio Hall of Fame, okay, uh, and um, I was in a category that the public votes on. All right. And the winners, uh, I was up against Sally Jesse Raphael, who I personally felt should have won because of her, you know, her career and her history as a as a personality and not only in radio where she was being nominated for, but television as well. But there was also me. Uh, there were also some other people who have been in radio a while. And the thing was won by a morning team in Philadelphia that I never heard of in my life. <laughs> you know, and I'm going, okay, so my one shot to get in the Radio Hall of Fame and I get upstaged by these two, I would say if I listened to them, I'd say this is mediocre. You know, two mediocre morning show hosts. You know, and they probably went and picked up their trophy and were so happy for it, but you know, People like me helped establish what happens in this business. I, I was saying to somebody the other day in one of these discussions we were having, maybe it was Kravitz, that uh, there would be no Howard Stern if there hadn't been an Alex Bennett. You know, because this guy grew up listening to me. Right, yeah. You know, and I influenced him. And that's fine. I don't mind influencing somebody and having them do terrifically because they took what I did and interpreted it for themselves and and became a success with it. But what does bother me is that I'm not getting that same kind of payoff. You know, at least something as simple as being admitted to the broadcast radio hall of fame. You know, which he by the way it wasn't in inducted into many years ago before he probably even really deserved it. You know, so I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing that bothers me, and it should bother you too. I mean, you you watch comics who are big and successful, and you go, "How come I didn't make it?" Do you ever say that to yourself? Well, I think I know. I just uh, I didn't. Uh, I staying in San Francisco is probably the biggest mistake. But. Well, that is a mistake. Yeah, yeah, that would be. But are you happy? Well, wait a minute. That's, I'm asking Larry Bowles Brown. <laughs> is he happy? I don't think I'm less happy than I would have been elsewhere. So, okay. So, uh, uh, but uh, you know, do you feel that you've had a good career? I'm yeah, simply by the fact that I made a living doing stand-up, which is not easy. So. Okay, the fact that you were able to do it and continue doing it and make a living out of it was enough for you. Yeah, when I started out, I thought, man, if I could just make my living doing comedy, that'd be the greatest thing I could do, and so I did that. So you did that. So you're successful. Yeah. You're successful. So yeah, at that point, yeah, yeah, sure. Now, I am I successful? Was I successful? Oh, absolutely. You're See, right. I don't ever feel I was successful. 
No, you were you dominated the radio here. Yeah, but I don't feel I was successful, you know, when the whole thing was going on. So you would like to have dominated nationally. Yeah, I was talking to somebody today for about uh, an hour uh, that you have been bugging to call me. And about a week ago, he got in touch with me. And that was uh, Chuck Farnham. Oh, uh, wow, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were talking, you know, we were talking about the old days. And it was the same discussion kind of that you and I had about if I went back to San Francisco now and had to, and wanted to do my show, everybody would be disappointed because of the things I couldn't do. You know, it, it wouldn't be the same. Uh, and, um, but I never felt, I never felt that I was particularly successful, I, you know. I felt a certain privilege in San Francisco, and I felt maybe successful in San Francisco. But I would love to have been successful nationally, you know. Yeah. And I, I never got to that point. Also, radio in those days was not yet all satellite delivered, you know. And so I, anytime I may try and make a deal somewhere, I'd want to say, well, are you going to put me up on a satellite? You know, are you going to uh, syndicate me? Uh, and uh, I almost left San Francisco at one point to go to work for Mel Carmazan, the guy who uh, gave um, Howard his career, to go to Washington, D.C. to do a show for him, and they were going to syndicate that. And at the last minute, I turned it down because I felt I was betraying Live 105 if I left. So Really? Wow, yeah. that would have been huge. Yeah. So that was my... Uh, I also turned it down because I had heard terrible things about Mel Carmazan, this guy I was talking about. And, you know, I mean, horrible stories about him and how mean he could be and how demanding he was and blah, 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 blah. Well, uh, and that, I turned it down for that reason, too. I, I didn't trust him. And then I went to work for him at Sirius XM because he became the head of Sirius XM while I was there. And I went, well, I'm out the door now, you know. And no, I was still there. And finally, one day, I remember it was, we were, we were uh, at the bottom, at the bottom of the stock market. I think the stock was down to five cents. That's how <laughs> bad it was. That's how bad it was. And <laughs> and um, I met up with him in the break room. And I walked up to him and I introduced myself. I said, uh, Mel, uh, I'm Alex Bennett. And he looks back at me and goes, yes, I know. I'm a fan. Real. And we got into a discussion and I suddenly realized that Mel loved what I did and that he loved what anybody on the air did, that he was, he, he, he would go into a station and yell at the general manager and at the salespeople and so on. But then he would go in and just, he praised on the talent because he loved mm. talent and I made a big mistake by not taking that job in Washington that was yeah, the biggest wow. mistake I ever made you know in my career so I also made some mistakes too you know I often said that careers are made not on the jobs you take but on the jobs you don't take that's so true you know and, uh, um, you know, like from once I was uh, offered a job to go back to Houston, Texas. I had a fairly decent salary. My wife and I were in New York, and we're broke, and we don't know what we're going to do next and where our next penny is coming from. And I, they fly us into Houston, and they wine us and dine us. And I come back to New York, and I look at Ronnie, it was then my wife. Uh, or no, Susan, who was then my wife. I have to remember when my, who my wives were. Um, and I said to her, I can't take the job. And I said, well, she said, why? And I said, because that's going backward. That's not going forward. And so I turned down the job. A week later, I was asked to come to San Francisco to audition for the job at KMEL, which I couldn't wow. have done had I taken that other job. So it was then that I learned that careers are made off many times off the jobs you don't take, not the ones you take. Uh, and uh, the rest is uh, history, as you put it, you know, or kind of history. 
you know, yeah. radio like history, that. which isn't history at all, you know. So, but so many actors have uh, ruined their careers by taking bad films. Oh yes, absolutely, absolutely. Or they take they take a bad film, and because uh, they're expected to make a lot of money for the company, and the film doesn't make money, they're suddenly poison at the box office. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, yesterday's hero is today's. Schmo, yeah, terrible, terrible, just horrible. So you know, I mean, that's that's about you know, and and uh, you know, so, uh, but you you should have gotten the big break. I mean, you you know, you're the guy we love talking famously about this, who did the Letterman show, did a great set on it, and they said get another what five minutes, yeah. and, and come back when you're ready, and you didn't do it for twenty years. Ready in 20 years. <laughs> I took ready. my time. And then when you did it in 20 years, it was a great set. I mean, <laughs> that when you walked off, everybody told you, great set, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, you were even better than you were the first time because you were Oh, I got much better, yeah. I was just... Uh, but the fact first time, that... The, first yeah. time you do TV is a little nerve-wracking, to say the yeah. least. So. The fact that you waited 20 years... <laughs> That was maybe your biggest mistake. Yeah, that was. Uh, can't come back when you're but, ninety. But then and again, you know, I, I got to tell you, uh, Jake Johansson. Remember Jake Johansson, right? Mm-hmm. No, Jake, who's a good comic, holds the record, I think, for comics who have been on the Letterman show more than any other done, comic. Oh, I think he did forty. Yeah, just unbelievable. Is that, that many? Yeah. Jesus. And That's, where where's Jake Johansson today? He's a working comic. So. Yeah, but did he get any bigger than the, the clubs? No, he made a couple, made one movie. Uh, that, uh, I guess, didn't work for him. I don't know why. It was a fairly good movie. Um, but, I mean, Jake just, uh, you know. Well, he, he made uh, one huge mistake, is what I heard, was uh, Seinfeld wanted him to be Kramer. Oh. And he turned it down. Really? I didn't. Never heard that story. I heard that story, and I think I thought, well, that couldn't be right. And then I, I looked it up on Wikipedia, which is notoriously wrong. But that's that story is mentioned that he was friends with Seinfeld, and Seinfeld really thought he'd be great as Kramer. But did they offer it to him? I think it was offered, and he said no, because at the time, I think he, I think he, what I heard was he wanted to star in his own sitcom. No. Oh. Well, what you do is you star in somebody else's sitcom, and then you get your own sitcom. Yeah. I mean, I think... Well, to what, me, that's... Uh, I never wanted... I just wanted to be a supporting character in a sitcom. That would have been my idea of fame. Because it was very little work, and it was an easy job, and you make good money. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know... I David mean, Spade was really good at that. He always took, like, the supporting roles in sitcoms, and he did very well. Well, and he established his character that he could be hired for. Yeah, Bobby Slayton did the pilot for. I'm trying to remember what what it was. Now he played like uh, the fix it guy in a building or something, and I'm trying to remember what the show was. But it was was it that uh, was it that sitcom a Richard Lewis sitcom? I think that might have been it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, and uh, that didn't go. So he, that was the last time he was ever set up for a sitcom. <laughs> but that, that's what a lot of comics wait for. They wait for the sitcom to come along, and then they drop comedy altogether. You know, but then there are people like Bobby Slayton who are really the quintessential stand-up comic, and that doesn't necessarily translate into a part in a sitcom. No. You know? But there was a time in TV, the 80s and 90s, they were throwing sitcoms at comedians. Yeah, but they were sometimes they were pilots, and then they never went any further than that. Like I have, I I saw, and I in fact edited into his reel that I put together for him, Bobby Slayton's biggest part that never happened. They were going to do an animated version. They were going to do an, a, a version of the Pink Panther with human beings and the animated panther. And guess who the voice of the panther was? Yeah, really? <laughs> Bobby Slayton. It, and it was perfect. That was the perfect voice for the Panther. You know, because you just got that rough little voice, you know. And they, whatever. 
But anyway, hey, listen, I'm looking. Ooh, ooh, we're coming down on uh, time's up almost. We must uh, be jacked up on that caffeine. <laughs> yeah, right. I wish I could get jacked. I can't get jacked up on caffeine anymore. It just kind of mildly gives me, uh, keeps me awake for about 10 minutes or something. You know, <laughs> anyway. Well, you know, we're, we're all going to die. Okay. That's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, listen. Hey, listen. It's good talking to you again. And good talking we, to you. We, we must do this again next week. We, we shall. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that's our, his nibs, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Alex. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Oh, thank you very much, Larry. We'll be with you again uh, next week, I guess. Yeah, we do it uh, once a week uh, with him, and uh, be, that'd be good. Okay? Terrific. Hi, everybody. How are you? I'm Alex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. I'm tired tonight again. I don't know what's with me. I, you know, I'm, I, 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 you know, I'm a hypochondriac, as you know, and I've become more of a hypochondriac since my friend Shecky died. I just, I just feel that, hey, my days are numbered. I'm feeling tired all the time. I'm weak, blah, 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 blah. And actually, I look at myself in the mirror and I'm healthy, but I, you know, I'm having a little trouble walking and, uh. I know. Maybe it's just, you know, I really need to get out. I really need to get out. I'm having some more B12. This this jacks me up a little bit, okay? Let me see here. Uh, okay. mm, mm. You just put it under your tongue, and then you just let it sit there. Anyway, so, you know, I mean, I'm... I'm uh, uh, I, ever ever since uh, Shecky went, uh, I uh, I've been a little bit on the uh, on, on the real hypochondriacal side. Just ask my wife; she has to live with it. And I've always been a hypochondriac, but you know, as I get this old, you know, you you wake up every morning, you go, "Is this the last day on earth?" You know, and uh, uh, I I know that sounds depressing, doesn't it? Wait a minute, let me let me bring Charlie Wallace in here. You're by the way, Charlie, uh, you are, in fact, the only one waiting uh, to come on here. So uh, let me see here. Do we have him? Is he going to get we gonna oh, have? Yeah, wait a minute. There we go. Ah, yes. Oh, here comes Vernon Nunn, too. Vernon's joining us now. Thank you, Vernon. I appreciate it. Oh, and Kevin is calling as well. So. We have like four, three really intelligent people and one stupid one. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Oh, there, Alex. there goes your, there goes your, your bad. Uh, look at, look what's happening there, Vernon. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna have to go back to your other machine. Yeah, yeah this, this yeah. computer, this computer, is dying on me. I guess. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have to go get the other one. Okay. Well, we'll see in a little bit. Okay, uh, we'll uh, we'll get rid of Vernon here uh, so that he doesn't. Uh, uh, oh, there we lost him. Okay, there's uh, there's Kevin. What are you standing up for, Kevin? Kevin's standing up, and nobody's able to get their machines going tonight. Oh, damn! You know something? You're not wearing one of your spiffy T-shirts. Yours just says Arizona, and I know what that means. Yeah, I was feeling nostalgic. Yeah. Did you go to Arizona? State? I lived in Arizona for 18 months. Oh, for 18 months? Yeah. But did you go to school there? No, 18 and 19. 2018, 2000. When I first called. No, oh, really? You were in Arizona, weren't yeah. you? And where had you come from to go to Arizona? Austin, Texas, where I came back to. Okay. Yeah. So why did you leave Austin, Texas? To, uh, was, it a, was it a wife you broke up with or something? or? Oh, well, girlfriend. Girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. And so you went, what, did you go to Arizona with her? Yep. And then when we broke up, I moved back off. Screw you. I'm going back to where I want to be. Yep. Uh, you're not, are you from Texas? I can't remember now. No, I grew up in Chicago. You grew up in Chicago. Okay. So what made you wind up in Texas? I went to graduate school at the University of Texas at Austin. I see. Okay. 
Well, that makes a lot of sense, you know. So anyway, ah, 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 look at my red tongue. That's from, the B, that's from the B12. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing tonight? All right. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, uh, I'm just um, I'm just tired all the time. I don't know what it is. I think it's just I don't go out. And I'm stuck, uh, stuck indoors, and I think it's boredom, and I need to go out, and I need to get some exercise. Exactly. And yeah. uh, that will probably help me a great deal. But first, I got to be able to walk. I can't got to get my legs going again. You know. So, what the hell? You know. They use it or lose it. Well, we just lost Kevin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, just close the door. You know, a big, big, brawny guy like you, and you've got a pink chair. <laughs> What's that all about? It was in my daughter's room, and I stole it. I see. A long time ago? It, quite a while ago. I keep saying I'm going to get another one because this is uncomfortable as hell, and it squeaks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh boy. Well, anyway, so uh, so what, what what is new? We don't we look. You are the only guys on the show right now. Where is everybody? I don't know. There's some stupid thing called the you know the final four or whatever That's that thing is. Watching, yeah. Yeah. You know, so they're probably watching that. Either that, or nobody loves me anymore. <clears throat> you know. I know so. Josh is on the road. Yeah, Josh on the road. Josh is, uh, said, apologize to everybody for me that I'm not there tonight, but I'm uh, in Yorktown, right? Is that where he's yeah. yeah, yeah. And so he's very nice. Sent me a note, said I'm not going to be able to be there tonight, and I just wanted to let you know. And I felt that was very nice of him. You know, far be it from anybody else. Like, oh, for instance, uh, who who isn't here? That's always here. Uh, um, well, Jeff's not Jeff, here. Jeff's not here, and who else? Tony. To um, well, Tony uh, and uh, what's his name? You know, Josh. Jo uh, no, not Josh. I it said Josh wasn't going to be here. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. But uh, anyway, so I joined late. Hi. Brian Neary, yeah. Yeah, well, you know. That's right. He might Brian show up G. later. Here. He might show up later. But, you know, he calls almost every night. So, I, you know, like when you don't call, Charlie, I go, okay, you know, but he calls most of the time. You know, so I can't fault him for it. Well, uh, if it quit raining, I'd probably be here last. But it's been raining so much. <laughs> it's, it's still raining out there, huh? Here, oh, here comes Wayne. Wayne. Um, he, Brian uh, said he's coming. Hmm? Brian said he's logging on now. Oh, really? Oh, okay. All right. So he's getting a hold of you. He's just not getting a hold of me. That's what it's all about. Oh, no. yeah. The way he is, yeah. I guess. Yeah. He's on the chat. Let's talk, let's talk about him behind his back before you. <clears throat> there you go. Hmm. Must have heard us. So we know this is the real Wayne because it's Wayne ZBR, right? No, yeah. Not no, no, don't, 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 don't say that. <laughs> Don't say that. That's our code word. Yeah. yeah. Now we're going to have to come up with a new code word. Well, oh. you know the people who are trying to intervene, they, they watch your shows. I don't know if they do, to be honest no, with you. I think yeah, they do think it. They're on the chat. That's the only thing. I think, they, I think they do it blind. I really do. I think they just take a chance that, uh, hey, I'll, I'll uh, just uh, check in with him and see if he'll pick up. And then they well, wait and they wait if anybody, if anybody else tries to call in as and none don't let them do it yeah let me see here is this going to be tony okay is it is it is it is it is it tony is it to there it is tony my god it is tony oh i feel like shit too i know you look like shit what, i what? know you know why i got a cold alex i think i got a cold bug or something i don't i may have something myself i don't know what I it is nasal drip going i now. got a nasal drip and i and i and i've been like i walk around i'm like in a fog you know kind of foggy you have yeah, like, it's been real high it's like a cold, i caught a cold from my sister i think she's a teacher yeah yeah but three uh, pollen's been high here you know yeah, that might be it that too. could be causing my 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 uh loopiness you know but i've been just all day just really lightheaded like i'm blowing my nose all day like i got that little yeah yeah so yeah. well alan just texted me he's gonna be here in a little bit alan oh okay all right yeah. phil's not calling he was just talking to me huh 
Phil is not calling. He's tired, he said. Well, we're tired of you, Phil, so go away. <laughs> he's got some kind of gal tomorrow. He's telling me, oh, no. I says, call out. I like when you yell at him. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, whenever he calls, like we do our show on either Wednesday yeah. or Thursday with him, that's the lowest rated night of the week for me. Yeah. Except, I go to your page, they yell at him. It's funny, yeah. <laughs> except so yesterday. Deep. Except yesterday, yeah. the the, uh, the the show I did with the Kravitz was really low. And oh, then, you I know, what the highest, uh, the highest viewing viewership of anything that I'm doing is the other day I did my uh, little... You know, walk in the park with Marjorie, seven minutes long, eight minutes long, nothing happens, two old people tongue kiss, and then it's over with. And uh, I got something like, I don't know, 800 views or something like that, you know, without even breathing heavy, and the week ain't over yet. So, you know, yeah. Oh, Look at Ray. We, 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 oh, there we you go. Get my mother up. <laughs> what? My mother's Does he have, I like when he puts my mother's dog. Oh, I can put your mom. No, you no. How's she doing? Let's see how she I is. I with the other night. She was cooking in the kitchen. Then I woke up. Let's see here. Here's the, here's, yeah, she's here's the same background that. that I like. It. That, I can't believe she's that that uh, that. Uh, uh, he, see, it's the There's same. mommy. She never looked so good. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine getting woken up at two in the morning asking for a search. I thought she was like, what do you want? I need a search. Well, you got that from a still of Psycho, right? Yeah. yeah. That's Mama from Psycho. Yeah, I downloaded it. Yeah. Yeah. Psycho. Waking me up. Yeah. Trying to sleep here. I, 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 I just know. remember the, the, the kind of screams in the audience. When he, when she turns around and is in that chair and she's just, oh, yeah. you know, like that, and oh, everybody really? went, eh. and then of course, you know, Vera Miles know hits the uh, hits the lamp and it goes back and forth over the face and she's screaming. And uh, what's interesting about Psycho, nobody ever mentions this, but if you watch it, if too. you watch it closely, the very end, to begin with, uh, who is the cop? who brings a blanket to his mother. I don't know. I never watched the whole to, to rather Anthony Perkins, rather, at the end. They say, they say here, here's a blanket, and he takes it to uh, Anthony Perkins. Ted Knight. Oh, Ted Knight. Oh. Hello, Mary. Oh. Hello, Lou. Yeah. It's Ted Knight, yeah. We used to read the news all wrong. <laughs> but... He, he he's sitting there and you hear him thinking and there's a narration of what he's thinking and he's saying this that and the other thing he says and i don't know why they feel that because i would never hurt a fly yeah and all of a sudden it fades out to the car being pulled out of the water but just before the dissolve is almost complete that mother's face is momentarily superimposed on his face but you have to look quickly. I gotta watch that whole movie. Yeah, but if you watch quickly, that precise moment when they do the dissolve, they also have, um, um, you know, a, 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 his mother's face, skeletal face, mm -hmm. superimposed on his face as they fade to the. But it's it's quick. It's really quick. Ted Knight's face, or no, the, no, or... not Ted Knight's face. Listen to me, <laughs> Anthony Perkins. <laughs> God, I hate it when I say something and then people don't yeah, listen. No, I listened, but I, I, I didn't listen. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's the... You I didn't listen. It was perfectly clear to me. Is that what you told your teachers about? in school? I listened, yeah. but I didn't listen. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. <laughs> it's a good excuse. I accept it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what? <laughs> but anyway, so we, uh, we, um, yeah, um, uh, 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 in the news today, you know, what's kind of interesting is what's happening to the DA here in, in New York. Uh, he, uh, uh, this guy Bragg, who I, I'm really, he's becoming a hero of mine because he, did you see what happened now? Well, that's what I'm about to say. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 He, he um, he, he's been threatened. He, he got, they got, they got a little thing in the mail, and uh, it, they thought it might be, you know, since it was a white powder, that it could be, what do you call it? Uh, anthrax. Anthrax. But of course, of course, it never is. 
you know, that's what, and, that's it, how we and it was mailed from an address in Florida. Okay. And so, so he got the, it was mailed to an address from in Florida, from an address in Florida. Uh, and I hope it isn't the real address. So that guy's really stupid. And then on top of that, there's a letter inside. Uh, they're assuming that he hasn't like shipped the whole envelope out to the, uh, out to the toxic uh, people, uh, but he uh, he uh, in the note it says uh, I'm going to kill you. Don't beat around the bush. Now, what what brings out this kind of behavior in people? Yeah, they're crazy. Fuckers. Wait a minute, what know. brings out this kind of behavior in people? Anybody have a guess? Trump. That's <laughs> it. You get the freaking uh, what? Sociopath running for president. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he, he says, he says, well, I'm not encouraging anything, but if it's, there's going to be some real violence in this country. <laughs> he totally, he did it again today. He did it again. Yeah. What was it he said exactly? I remember it was, I'm paraphrasing it. It's just like the January 6th thing all yeah. over again. Yeah. What what he said, it was very similar. Yeah. yeah. But if they, they try to indict me, uh, there's going to be a lot of violence in this country. Yep. That's what he and said. Blood, yeah. he said. You blood. know what I remember? I remember uh, what was the what was the play Beckett, uh, the play Beckett, and, and it was made into a movie. And it's when he, the uh, King of England wants to kill Beck, have Beckett killed by his minions, but he doesn't tell them to kill him. They just said, "Oh, I'm in complete misery, and I, only way I could be put out of my misery is if this guy Beckett were dead." And then these guys go out and kill him. That's kind of what Trump does. Yeah, it's like the, the mobsters. It's like the Roman yeah. emperors. It's all. It's all like implied. Yeah, yeah. I it don't. You know, I I I don't want to kill him. But if somebody else wants to, I won't stand in your way. You know. Yeah, but did you hear today that Mike Pence is probably going to have to testify, as is Mark Meadows, because this. Uh, privilege that they have claimed has been shot down by the judge yeah yes yeah now can they appeal that they can but the court of appeals has already ruled against his lawyer who said that uh, he he can't testify because of attorney client privilege that's already been appealed to the uh, circuit court and the circuit court struck it down too said no you got to testify before the grand jury yeah yeah well you know, I, eventually, eventually, I think they'll nail Trump. But the more they keep trying to nail him, the more he commits more crimes. Yeah. And that this is not you think of you'd like to think that Donald Trump, if nothing more, is we is not stupid, you know, and that we don't want to. Oh, under, I think he is. We yeah, don't want to underestimate him, but he's stupid. You know. He's cunning, but he's stupid. Yeah, he's good at being cunning. He's very good at it. He's got street smarts. Yep. Okay. Or maybe yep. even gangster smarts. I mean, he he. I think he he would love to have become a gangster, and actually, he has become a gangster. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just uh, just terrible. I mean, I can't believe that this guy is president was president of the United States, so that anybody. But any half a brain would vote for him, which makes me believe that this country has a bunch of people that don't have half a brain. Well, you know when this all started, right? When? During Reagan. When he I started, was going to say that. He started downplaying public schools, how horrible they were, and dummied down the public school education in this country. And ever since then, it's gotten worse and worse and worse. And, of course, the Republicans are good at saying, oh, this sucks. And then they do everything they can to make it suck. Yeah. And then they complain some more about how this sucks. Well, Don't you think it started when Reagan courted the uh, the right wing religious fanatics? Yes. And and it just spiraled from there. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Evangelicals. Yeah. Yeah. The evangelicals, uh, but I mean. It, um, uh, uh, I don't know that necessarily Reagan making the schools more less effective. Let's say. Uh, well, he wanted to he wanted to dummy down the the school lunch program by calling ketchup a vegetable. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. It isn't. No, it's a fruit. Oh. It's a condiment. 
No, but it's a fruit. It's not the a fruit vegetable. with sugar. <clears throat> yeah. Ketchup is a condiment. Well, it's a condiment once you process it. But the, right. the but on its own it's tomatoes are a fruit. Yeah. Tomatoes ketchup. are a fruit. Yes. Yes, uh -huh. but ketchup ketchup is made from tomatoes. Oh, ketchup. Is, he no, ketchup. Oh, he yeah. wants to say that. Oh, I see. Okay. He, he wants to say that, ketchup. Ketchup is a, a condiment made from tomatoes. Vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. What about catsup? <clears throat> What's up with you? Catsup. <laughs> You know, that, that's how our company got started was uh, anthrax in the mail. The three congressmen that got him after 9-11. Oh, yeah, I remember that. We, 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 we were, we were just, just before I started working at the company, they were making stuff to detect uh, bio threat stuff, so like anthrax. And then uh, after that happened, uh, we went in with Northrop Grumman and we test all the, all the U.S. mail that goes through. So if it went through U.S. mail, likelihood, we would have caught it. Really? Son of a bitch. Yeah. Now, I don't know who these guys think by... Most time, it's talcum powder, right? Something, yeah. yeah. I mean, all you gotta do is put talcum powder in the envelopes, mail it to somebody, and immediately you've got dogs sniffing it. You know? Well, oh, you could be something as simple as flour. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. that too. But talcum powder seems a little more lethal, you know? So, But, I mean... Uh, um, uh, so, anyway, this district attorney has been threatened... And he just isn't taking any threats. He goes, "Look, I get thirty of these a month. You know, I, if I if I if I stop doing what I'm doing every time I get one, I'd never get work done. So you know, um, but I think he's determined now, more than ever, to you know, to indict him. So uh, I think that's going to happen. I think it's going to happen next week, probably. You know." But uh, uh, I'd like to see Jack Smith bring uh, bring charges before the Manhattan D.A. because the Manhattan D.A. may not be as serious as obstruction of justice in the the uh, documents case at Mar-a-Lago. Well, the documents case is an entirely different case and much more serious. Right. And as is, of course, the January 6th insurrection is, is more serious. Uh, this thing is not ser as serious because it's a local issue. And it's uh, defined by the fact that it's uh, it's more a matter of uh, breaking the law in ways which are white collar. Okay. My point is Trump is going to make hay of it and raise a lot of money on it. By, he already uh, has by a million playing, and a half by playing yeah. victimhood. He's going to play victimhood even more once the Manhattan DA uh, indicts him. You know, I I just I, I said this last night. I'll say it again. I can't understand why any of these people send him money. Isn't he a billionaire? Isn't he supposed to have the money to take care of it himself? Do you really Ask your need? Buddy Phil. Huh? Phil sends him money. I, I know that. He does. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh yeah, but I mean, why send a guy who's got it? Supposedly, we know it's not true, but supposedly brags that he's a billionaire why send him any money what is i mean i've never seen one of those uh one of those uh telethons before you know where a rich guy says please send me money i'm, I'm down to my last two billion exactly i need i need to eat tomorrow <laughs> yeah I mean. well, did you see the performance did you see the performance with uh marjorie trader green and lauren bobert they went they went to the jail in dc to to uh, interview these people who are being held pre-trial oh. and talking about how horrible the, the jail conditions were and everything. And yet a Democrat, uh, a Democratic uh, Congresswoman who went along just to kind of keep things sane said these people had tablets, they were texting their family. She said, you know, I've been a, a, a prosecutor for 20 years and I have never been in a jail where people were given this many benefits. Wow. And so, and Bobert and Green went down there. Oh yeah, they went down there interviewing these people, talking about they were political prisoners, yada yada yada. It's a new comedy I mean, team of Bobert and Green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. That guy from Arizona, who's who's such an ass too. I forget his name, but he Andy he was Biggs. there too. Andy Biggs, yeah. Yep. What did, what did he do? Oh, he was with the group. Oh, he was with the group too. Yeah. D yeah. So. I, I can't keep up with the congressmen, though. There's so many of them. 
Yeah. You know, some of them you never even heard of. No. Yeah. In fact, I don't even know who my local congressman is. I do. Who? A local congressman used to be a state senator, and his name is uh, McG McGarvey. McGarvey here in New York? No, McGarvey in, in Kentucky. Oh, in Kentucky. Okay, I yeah. thought you third said district, Third District of Kentucky, my congressman is, is McGarvey, mm -hmm. and he took the place of John Yarmouth, who was there for 12 years or something. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mine is and the issue. only Democrat. <clears throat> and the only Democrat from Kentucky. The other five are all Republicans. Really? Okay. I see. I don't know who my my congressman is here. I only one I know about is out in uh, uh, Long it's Island. Probably AOC. It's probably AOC. Oh no, it isn't AOC. No, no, it's somebody else. I can't remember now. I uh, thought he covered your area. But uh, uh, you know, out in Long Island, they have that uh, guy who is oh, you know, uh, is, is Santos a, is a is yeah. A, he lied about everything. Yeah. What a nutcase he is. Well, he didn't tell the truth about nothing. You know, I think that uh, the Trump should be very jealous of him. He ain't making him look good. I mean, you, know, you know what I don't get? Him. What I don't get is Trump keeps looking for names to call DeSantis. You know, like oh, he calls yeah. him Ron the Sanctimonious. What is yeah, that? Yeah, I heard that one. <laughs> Half it, most of his audience had to go look it up in the dictionary if they even owned a dictionary. Okay. He's he's sitting he's sitting on a landmine here, and he doesn't go for it. Ron DeSantos. Yeah. Yeah. You could do that. You could do that. Well, I guess it wasn't a good idea. I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm quitting show business after. <laughs> no. But uh, I I just you know I, I I just don't understand politics today. Explain it to me, Kevin. Can't do it. <laughs> I mean, it's so it's so disgusting. It's amazing. It's just amazing. Um, by the way, there's a guy waiting to come on here, and I, he he does use his, his name to his credit. But then, if I suddenly notice it's him, he'll come on again with another name. Okay. And at the end of the show, when everybody's gone, I usually put them through on Zoom. So I can give him the finger and tell him he's a moron and tell him that, you know, I'm working on getting him thrown off of uh, Zoom and things like that. And he's always, he has no shirt on. I don't know if he has clothes oh on. He's naked. And, and I'm going, yeah, what is this? We, you know, at least put some clothes on. And then he doesn't have anything to say. He's a complete moron. You know, so he's sitting Are you there. an anti-shirt phobic? <clears throat> I'm an anti-shirtist. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, and I, 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 I can't believe it. there's another moron, okay, who would sit in our, uh, in our uh, waiting room, and I'm not answering it, and he'll stay there for the rest of the show. Why? You know, I'm not going to come to mm. you. So drugs, huh? Drugs. You think it's drugs? <laughs> you think it's drugs? I, I don't know. He may be from England or someplace like that. I don't know where he's from. You know. Maybe he's from a country where they don't wear shirts. That could be. Could be Bora Bora. <laughs> yeah. Or Maybe it's just hot as hell. Yeah. By the way, like Bali. If, any, the way if there's anybody that. listening to us who lives in Bora Bora, give me a call. I'd like to yeah. talk to you. Maybe we bond in Bora Bora. <laughs> yeah. And, and please put on a shirt, will you? Thank you. We appreciate yeah. it. Uh, now, Bree usually has a shirt on when he calls from Kuala Lumpur. Yeah. Really? So anyway, he's always in an air conditioned, very expensive building. <clears throat> today is a anniversary for me. Oh, it's exactly one month ago that I went to that doctor. Oh. And Dr. Vinnie Bamboots. I, I still <clears throat> haven't still gotten my results for my blood tests, <laughs> but he's gotten all the money for doing them from mm -hmm. Medicare. I saw Medicare sent it out a week or so ago. He, uh, he had that posted like by the following Monday, <laughs> you know, and I, I told you, $5,000, he billed Medicare. Mm. Now, he's not going to get all of that, but $5,000, he billed me Medicare, and I was only there for less than an hour. But Medicare probably said, ah, we only pay two fifty for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, what they said was, you want 5000 
think again, 1,200, you know. But I, I, you know, I was thinking of getting a whole, I, I don't know why. I mean, I'm just mad about it, and it's not costing me a penny because my health insurance takes care of the 20%, all of it, and the government pays that amount, and it's out of their pocket. But it's also out of my pocket and your pocket and so on. And we always ask why Medicare has problems, and it's because of doctors just like this, you know, who charge, he charged me $500 for a first-time visit. Have, have any of you been charged money for a first-time visit to any of your doctors? Not even to my car mechanics, $500. But, yeah, right. I mean, it's if your car mechanic said, oh, you brought your car in for the first time, so I'm going to have to charge you $500. Bucks. Like, like $100 for a diagnostic test, not $500. Yeah, but I mean, I just, I just, it just, uh, it, it just, uh, the gall of the this guy, uh, I'll blame it on him because he's the doctor, you know. And then they couldn't even draw blood out of my arms. So, what the hell? Anyway, so that's my anniversary, a whole month. I should have gotten, uh, I should have gotten the results the following Monday, but I didn't, you know. But he had the, the bill being sent out to Medicare by the following Monday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Uh, I tell you. What are we going to do about medicine in this country? I mean, we've got two. It's double prong. The problem. The problem is the cost of medicine. I mean, Ugh. well, think about it. I mean, uh, I, people go in to see this doctor. They pay five. You know, they don't have Medicare. They don't have insurance, and now they're billed five thousand dollars. And by the way, that's what they're going to have to pay if they don't have insurance. Exactly. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, that's an absolute crime. Okay in my book. But then you add to that what's, what's happening with the prescription drug people, and that's driving me really doubly nuts, not because of me. I mean, hey, I pay my, I, I, I get, I go to Costco to get my, my prescription drugs for the most part, and the stuff is pretty cheap, okay? I do it, and I don't even use my insurance to pay for it. Uh, but uh, you look at it, and man, oh man, uh, the prices that they charge from, for some drugs. You know, you see the, all these cancer drugs on television they advertise, you know. Do you know how much? I Then just go online and just say, how much is thus and thus, you know. And they'll tell you, it's like $20,000 or something like that. And I'm going, what are they making this stuff out of? Cocaine, you know. Hell, cocaine's cheaper. So anyway, but, you know, but yeah, yes, probably right. making probably making it out of stem cells. Yeah, probably making it out yeah. of stem cells. Yeah, but the thing is, like, it may cost that in the United States, and then they charge uh, Canadians like a tenth of the price. Yeah. Oh, but no, the Canadians is the Canadians uh, won't allow drug companies to because he in in uh, in Canada. It's all under the, the national health. And so, therefore, they just won't uh, have people be able to use, get the prescriptions for those drugs in that country if they don't come down to a certain price. And so they, and they do the same thing in England. It's just here. That's why our people go over the border to go get their drugs. Yeah. Well, there are, I discounts, guess. There are discounts available in this country, too, for some medicines. Not all medicines, but for some. There's mm -hmm. one my wife takes, and... Good RX, it's eighteen dollars for a month. If I didn't have Good RX, it was five hundred and twenty-seven dollars. But can you only you can only do that for one month, right? No. Oh, you every can, month. Oh, every month you can do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have uh, what, what? What's that drug that everybody's taking to lose weight now that diabetics need and they can't get it? Oh, oh yeah. Pregabalin. Oh, yeah. No, not pregabalin. Oh, what? Ozempic. Oh, but, but, Ozempic. Yeah. Ozempic. Yeah, that's one of them. Okay, yeah. let me just look here. Okay, and I will it's put it. It's supposed to Google. control your A1C. How, yeah, whatever that is. Uh, Charlie probably knows what is A1C. I, I don't need it, so I don't know. <coughs> it's your it's like your blood sugar. It's over <laughs> three months. Your blood sugar. Yeah. yeah. Ozempic. Wait a minute. Ozempic. Okay. Here we go. Okay, how much is Ozempic? Uh, let me see here. Sign up for savings. Blah, 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 blah. 
How much is a 30-day supply of Ozempic? Now, I don't think it's a 30-day drug, is it? It's a, it, it's a, it's a hyper, <coughs> it's an injection you do at home, right? Yeah. Uh, 30-day supply. Oh, uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, they say uh, $995 a month. Mm. That, that's cheap compared to some other drugs. Jesus. Yeah, you know. Um, it's uh, that's not bad, but uh, there was one drug I looked up and it was just the price was just amazing. And I'm going, why are you advertising to the average Joe on TV when they can't afford it? Even the, their prescription coverage probably won't let you do it, you know, or use it. Ask your doctor about Ozempic. Yeah, yeah. Nine hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> let me see here. I go over to Costco. I always lo love doing this, okay? I go Costco uh, Pharmacy, okay, here we go. And I'm going to welcome to Costco Pharmacy. And then I go, oh, here we go, it's down here. Uh, warehouse pickup, and then I go to drug pricing. And what, let's see here. Can I get Ozempic, Ozempic there? Uh, uh, let me see here. Oh, oh gosh. Ozempic. Okay. Oh, Jesus, I can't type this. Save my life anymore. Oh, Ozempic. They do carry it. Now, what do we see? Nine ninety five. Yeah. Okay. okay. Let's see here. Uh, this is. Uh, I got nine eighty. Oh. Costco, it's a thousand sixty-three. Oh wow, there's more. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Boy. Well, this is not drug-related, but something similar. There's, there's a, a, a breaker panel that I use when we build houses for habitat, mm -hmm. and we were we were short for some reason. The first year that I led the team, I ended up having to buy one from Home Depot online. Yeah. Well, if you look on the Schneider Electric website, who is the distributor for Square D panels, mm -hmm. it was a thousand and ninety-five dollars, and I could buy it from Home Depot for two hundred and thirty-five. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I mean, but I I just you know I just I just think that I just may I just feel so terrible for Americans, where every country in the civilized country except for one other have universal health care and what country do you think that is russia china china now you would think a communist country would have universal health care they don't but i'll tell you something i had to go to a hospital in china and it was extremely cheap really? this was in 1992 mm -hmm. It, they don't have use on it. You have to pay for it, but it's so damn cheap. Except what? for the Chinese, for a Chinese person though, maybe it's not cheap. For me, it was cheap. How, how, what did you have? Uh, I had a high blood pressure crisis because of something I ate that mixed with the medicine I was taking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I had an uh, irregular what, what, heartbeat. What that happened? Would that happen to be fried bat? <laughs> no, it was at a Pizza Hut. Oh, pizza yeah. Hut in China. Pizza hut in China. I take a medicine where I'm not supposed to eat like certain cheese, and I guess they had it in there. Hmm. Yeah, so how much? I have to get that medicine from Canada because uh, it cost eight dollars and sixty cents per pill in the United States, and it cost eighty cents per pill well, in Canada. Well, hold on a second. Let me go back to uh, wow. uh, to Costco here for a second, and uh, tell me. Uh, Let's see here. Okay, uh, but they might be quoting you the generic, which I can't take, which is the problem. But it has to be the brand name. Well, what 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 is the brand name? Uh, it's called. Uh, well, it's called Parnate. P A R N A T E. Parnate. P -A -R -N -A -T -E. Yeah, I don't know. The, I can't remember the actual like. Uh, Parnate. Yeah. Okay. Oh wait a minute. Here we go. Can't Anything. be generic. Oh. The, the generic is is cheap, but it I can't take it. Um, really, you can't. Take yeah, it. just uh, 
It's so screwed up. It's a, it's hardly anyone takes this medicine and the generic's been around since like 85 and I was never getting it and it, it, it wasn't work. It didn't work. And I, and I, I filed a complaint with the FDA and they didn't do anything because they said enough people hadn't complained. P-A-R-N-A-T? Yeah, N-A-T-E. Yeah, they don't uh, carry it. Uh, okay. Yeah, they don't carry it. Yeah. Do you know, do you know you who to, started, yeah. who's gotten into this whole thing of cheap drugs is uh, Mark Cuban. Oh. And he's got a site. Uh, oh, here comes Alan. Hold on a second. Let me admit Dr. Alan. Dr. Alan. Yeah, he was waiting in the waiting room Dr. with uh, the guy with no shirt on. He delivered a baby. Yeah. Maybe Alan saw him. Did you see the guy with no shirt in the waiting room, Alan? You don't get to see the other people in the waiting room, do you? I know, I know. No, no. I, on the phone, holding for the fucking doctor for this urinary tract problem I'm having. Anyhow, Which, and the doctor hung up on me after being on hold for an hour. Yes. So I told the nurse. To you go to me. Kaiser, don't you? Yeah, usually. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, my friend. My urine culture came back after the doctor left today, of course. So. My, my my old friend Larry Bubbles Brown refers to Kaiser, of course, as doctor-assisted suicide. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, in the, in the 90s, they had a, a, a sales thing that said, good people, good medicine, but somebody added good luck to it. <laughs> Really? Yeah. Well, we, we, see here we're talking about medicine, and that comes up. I, just, I actually had a nightmare last night about doctor-assisted suicide. Really? Oh, really? It was a horrible dream. I woke up in a terrible mood. Really? Yeah. I hate that when you wake up dead. Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> well, it certainly though. If, if whatever is wrong with you, it cures it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So. <laughs> Are any of you guys watching the tournament, the basketball tournament? Oh yeah, me, I, me, yeah, me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you talk about March Madness. Yeah. All four, all four mm -hmm. of the number one seeds have lost. I know. Wow. The, the so pretty time. much, pretty much, brackets have been completely destroyed, is what I'm told. This is the first time in the history of the NCAA tournament that the Elite Eight does not have at least one number one seed. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, that's, that's probably good. because of Trump is also. <laughs> well, what is it? What is who, What's the one that uh, that uh, that uh, Jimmy Kimmel always kids about? He said he doesn't really believe there is a school called Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Yeah. Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Oh, okay. He said it, it just doesn't exist. You know? oh, it does. And they why? Had, in fact, they wrote him and said, we'll fly you up here just to show you Gonzaga University. But every it's year, a, guys, it's a Jesuit private college in uh, Spokane, Washington, I think, yeah. isn't it? Is yes. It? Yeah. Is it named like, after Father Gonzaga? No, just <laughs> Creighton, Creighton oh, University. Oh. Creighton University is a Jesuit private college in Omaha, Nebraska. Oh. And they're still in the tournament. Oh, keep talking wow. about this because I get to keep my uh, my uh, Emmy for another year. Keep going. Well, you John go. Stockton went to Gonzaga. Vernon, if you know, you that. know who, who uh, went Jesuit, to Gonzaga? Jesuit yeah. colleges often have really good basketball teams. There's only one school left in the tournament that's, that was a number two seed. All the other number two seeds have gone. And the only one left is Texas. Yeah, they really? just won. They had to beat. Uh, they beat. Yeah. Texas is well, beating Xavier right yeah. now. Yeah. I don't want to jinx them. Texas is ahead 65 to 43 in the second quarter. Yeah. I want to see if any of you would think I was frozen. Well, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got the sports Emmy. You should be yeah, talking about it. Uh, let's check your temperature. Hold still. <laughs> My temperature's been a little on the higher side lately. Tony, you look horrible. Yeah, Tony's you got. You know what it is? We we do have some, the pollen is coming back. I got a cold oh. here. Well, it could be pollen. It could, could be. be. I think I got my sister's call from uh, from the kids in our class. The she was kid, one of her kids in her class could have had COVID. It could test yourself, Tony. I actually did test myself and I was negative. I did it last oh, week. Yeah, yeah, I got so many kids in the house. But you yeah. want me to tell you something very interesting? Uh, and I hate to go back and belabor the situation with Shaggy, uh -huh. but uh, a woman that I know uh, that is is uh, was taking care of Shaggy towards the end helping him a lot. She's a great woman. She was the assistant director over at Letterman. She uh, wrote me a note and she said, um, 
I'm now going through his house, and I thought I'd just get a hold of you and Did see he? if there's anything you want. Oh. Okay. And I thought about it, and I, I wrote her back, and I said, I can't think of anything. Because it's strange that I don't, you know, what, what, Shecky didn't have anything that I would want, you know. Like if he had a video camera sitting around, it was a really good video camera, I'd say, sure. But no, that wasn't what Shecky was into. All the stuff he was into, I never ever, I think, was ever envious of anything that Shecky had because the stuff he had was stuff that I wouldn't have, you know? So I couldn't come up with anything. It's uh, uh, very nice of you to ask, but, you know, I, I can't think of anything right now. And uh, so I'm, I'm, and I'm try I keep trying to think, what did I think about what's in that house? Because I went over there a lot. And uh, the only thing I could think of was in his, uh, in, in his mother's bedroom, which he used to call it, or my bedroom, which he used yes. to call it sometimes. Uh, he, uh, he had a, uh, a rocking chair. Which I yeah, would then, my mother has one still. Yeah. yeah, I would pick up and put it in his room while we sat there and talked, so I would have something to sit on. And every time I went over, I would sit in this rocking chair, and I thought, well, maybe I maybe I could go for the rocking chair, you know, because that has some kind of association with with Shecky. But then I thought about it, and I said, I got to lug that rocking chair back to New York mm -hmm. City, yeah. to Manhattan, and on top of that. Beside, you know, I can put it, I can order up a car and bring it with me or whatever. But on top of that, is he going to go throw up? The, you got to lug it up eight floors, right? <laughs> well, it, yeah, right, right. I can put it. But, but I thought about it. It's not that great a rocking chair. So it's not like it's a really old, you know, antique rocking chair. It's just an old rocking chair. So, you know, it was the one thing my parents I kept. They had a rocking mm. chair, and I think I still have I have, have one, too, for my grandmother. <clears throat> yeah. That's what... I loved my parents' rocking chair, you know? It was uh, it was terrific. Uh, and it had, you know what it had? It had a creek in it. But you know they built creeks into those things? Into rocking chairs? So really? they would squeak when you, when you, you know. So anyway, that's all boring stuff. Right, Wayne? Yes. <laughs> He's the nighttime version of uh, what's his name? Uh, Jeff. No, not Jeff. No, no. Uh, oh, uh, Edward, Edward Berger. Edward Berger. Edward yeah. Berger. Yeah. Ed Berger. Ed Ed Berger. Ed, yeah. If you people haven't ever watched the uh, Monday show, you're in for a treat if you haven't seen <clears throat> Edward Berger or heard Edward Berger. You don't need to see him. He has what's a it? voice naturally that is a cartoon voice. Yep. Yeah. I'll show it to you. What are you did? You just I saw this. did you just throw up? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, you oh, see oh. The chair? Uh, well, it's show and tell now on rocking yeah. chairs. That's, well, a, this what, is what, like years old now. that's a that's a nice rocking chair. Yeah, this is like my grandmother's. It's it's really old, like Shecky's had. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah. 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 Well, you know the old. you know the rocking chair at Shecky's. I'm talking. Yeah. About. yeah I remember because I said, my God, my mother has one too. Yeah. yeah we saved this. To take pictures of it, Tony, and send it to all your friends. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, it's, it's terrific, Tony. Thank you. Thank you for your show and tell tonight. You realize, see, that it's the same background that Ray has, okay? Mm -hmm. Which is... Except for Ray's got his mother in Right there. now, everybody, get a screen grab of that, okay? <laughs> and then you can do it, too. We oh, can't hear you, Ray. You're Ray, muted. we can't hear You're you. Muted, Ray. His mother was in a rocking chair in the movie. <sighs> yes, yeah. right. Yeah, right. So that's kind of creepy. That is kind of <laughs> creepy. No, I like a you know, good rocking chair is wonderful. Oh yeah, I have one for thirty dollars. Yeah, there's nothing more relaxing than a nice rocking chair. And then if it has oh, a little yeah. bit of creak in it, you know, yeah. it's really, really cool. Really cool. So you know. Folks, uh, How come the other people don't have the wallpaper. I mean, hmm? what's up with that? Yeah, what do you want for breakfast? I sent it to everybody at one time. Yeah. What? Oh, the wallpaper. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, look the there we go. Shot. There we go. We got three now. 
It's yeah. Awesome. Tony, you need better lighting. Your sucks. I, I know. Well, you used to have yes. more lighting. Yes. We, we painted the apartment, so but we're keeping the wallpaper though, actually. Oh, if you got rid of that wallpaper, I wouldn't talk to you ever again. No, and that's no, what makes it you great. Said that, I'll never forget that day. Yeah, I never noticed how bad it was until you said that, it. That's the worst it wall. That's, right. that's, that's the it worst. Doesn't match. That's the worst wallpaper I've ever seen. It's when you when I closed when you signed off that night, I turned around. I was like, you know. It doesn't match. He's right. And I closed the lights up. I went downstairs. I started laughing. <laughs> yeah, but My brother's like, what are you doing? I was just laughing. Well, what's that little good. round thing in there? Is that like something you you just... Uh, it's a plate, isn't it? It's at a plate? Hanging on the wall. A oh, plate yeah. hanging on the wall, yeah. My mother's old plates. I was taking them down, you know, packing them up, actually. When? Like a year ago? Well, she's got so much stuff this woman i'm finding things that i said to my sister man mommy's got so much shit. Yeah. i mean it's bad so you're not finding gold coins knickknacks little angels she better be in heaven my mother because if she's not i'm going to take out a search warrant it was running that place and, or, either that or you know that it was a waste of time buying all those angels yeah, I, mean, oh, Alex, I got so much stuff i mean i bought her a lot of stuff too so she saved everything by the way i'll make you a bet before you yeah. came on tonight our friend Tony has had coffee. Four cups. <laughs> Four <laughs> cups. The basketball game. Of, yeah. You know, how do you sleep? Yes. If, if he coffee. doesn't drink coffee, okay. I'm up like a wire. I got to watch Hitchcock tonight. The, the wrong man, I think. Can I keep myself I, off I my think, Did you hear that I was talking? <laughs> I'm sorry. Forget it. It doesn't matter. I watched said it. if he doesn't have coffee. Oh, um, no. Hmm? If he doesn't have oh, coffee, what know, happens? I, I think your delivery is tomorrow, your decaf coffee, Tony. Oh, oh thank you. Well, he got me decaf. He knows I'm too wide with the regular. Oh, did you send him decaf? Thank Absolutely. you, Alan. He's very nice to me, Alan. I have to say that. Really? You're, you're welcome, Tony. Little, but he's always I, thanks to me. I have to say that. I, I, I'm a nice guy most of the time. I just play an asshole on the show. Yeah. Okay. Plays an asshole on TV. <clears throat> yeah, there you go. Thank, thank you. you. I'm not on TV. You're the actor. You're on TV right now. Oh, okay. I guess. I, I bet somebody's watching you on a TV somewhere. Oh, uh, well. Yeah, he might be right. Yeah. Yeah. So anybody have anything interesting they're up to for this weekend? Hmm. I don't want to leave the house, but I'm watching the basketball games tomorrow. <laughs> Something interesting. <laughs> Underline the word interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I said interesting. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, look, I understand people are really all jazzed up about about the uh, about the final four. Uh, but what happens is, is that all these sports events now all have this big event they do now. Everybody goes crazy. Over, oh, it's, it's, didn't we just get through with the Super Bowl? I think we did. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but March Madness pushes more money than all of that stuff. Does it really? The gambling everywhere. Well, because you, how many how many games? Do you, but you have it all bracketed, and you've got yeah. like you get down to the top sixteen or something like that, right? And then the betting really starts. After this weekend, yeah. it'll be the elite eight. People start with sixty four teams, and then they lose their ass, and then they rebet, and then they rebet, and then they rebet. And they you can bet on losing. games. You can bet on individual games. Yeah, it's huge. It's it's much more than Super Bowl. And what's terrible that makes it even more terrible is you can now bet online. Yeah, you know, bet right, yeah, in two seconds. Oh wow, yeah, two seconds. Yeah, wow, my phone. <laughs> yeah, you can lose your house in two seconds. I heard an interesting statistic: is the the number of vas vasectomies goes up significantly <laughs> right the beginning of March Madness. <laughs> And they think it's because then the men have an excuse to sit on the couch for two weeks and. I was going to say, is that in the hospital or at home vasectomies? At home vasectomies? <laughs> Where the wife rips off your nuts. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's bullshit. Because, you know, I was back at work the next Monday after my I had on Friday. And I was back at work Monday, so I don't want to hear about. Two weeks. Oh, listen, if I... Yeah, were, well, you just lie. Say, hey, the doctor told me I have to sit around for two weeks. If I weren't so questionable about it, okay, Marjorie would watch more basketball uh, than she does. She she would watch all that stuff. She loves those things. She, she even watched a bit of the Super Bowl. 
You know, you don't like the sports talk. I watch basketball. No, I, I just, I find, I'll tell you, uh, if if I have, if it's like the World Series, oh, like the World and Series. it's down to the last couple of games, okay, uh, I can get excited a little bit. You know, I can get a little excited about that, but I can't get excited about football because I don't know how it's played, and I can't get excited about basketball. Uh, because again, you know, I understand how it's played, but I just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm sorry, I don't get it. I, you know, it's a, a very non-impactive sport. All right. I think back and forth, back and forth too. Yeah. Now, here's what I would go for: football with guns. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I would pay to see that. I would even bet on that. Okay. You know. How would they do that? Just before a guy's about ready to make a touchdown, just before he's about ready to go over the end zone, see, I know some of those terms, you just shoot him in the head. There goes your monetization. I'd pay to see that. (laughs) Advocating violence. Hey, listen, anything will kill my monetization. I've had nights where tonight we, I don't think we've used a single four letter word, if I'm not mistaken. Have you heard any? Anybody? FL. And I will get demonetized tonight. Fuck no. <laughs> well, thank you. I wanted to go the whole show without doing I said it. puck no. Oh, oh puck well, no. what about the word work? There's a four yeah. letter word. Yeah, but I mean, I, I just, you know, I uh, uh, I, I get the, I, I get demonetized every night on the uh, on just the, the stream. Uh, and then I have to say, uh, I want this reviewed. And then they review it and say, oh, you're okay. Well, then why are you doing this to me every night? You know, and then you collect your 20 cents. And I collect my 20 cents. It's because they have algorithms that are looking at this stuff. Just like, yeah. just like resumes. I saw a story the other day about resumes. Most major companies now, they hire ZipRecruiter or someplace like that to review all the resumes submitted to their company. And before a human being looks at it, ZipRecruiter has an algorithm that looks been going at on for resume, years. And it tells the company then, okay, you need to talk to this guy or you need to talk to this guy. It's all keywords. I was told that years ago. Yeah. You know why you get demonetized is because we talk about prostates too much. (laughs) Really? I think so. Because then it's like prostate massage and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, Tony talks about his prostate. Yeah. (laughs) That, 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 His that prostate is very feet. prostrate. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. It's better than having him ax, ax you to death, you know. Mm-hmm. Ax. He's axed his anyway, prostrate. Anyway, there, there's our little theme song. <laughs> and this is, you know what I like about the show the last couple of nights? We haven't gotten too damn political. And we just chatted. And uh, what's happening? it's so oh much goodness. nicer and it gets a larger audience, oddly enough, you know. Wait till they get him, then we'll talk about politics. Yeah, yeah. Well, you heard that. You heard that the first rally that Trump had after announcing that he was running for president again was held on the 30th anniversary of the Waco massacre. Oh, oh really? Jesus! <laughs> yeah, in yeah. Waco, in Waco. Oh, yeah. in Waco. Yes, he did do it yeah. in Waco, didn't he? Uh, what and a what a schmuck And it was the 30th guy anniversary is. of that massacre. Go too. ahead. I said a schmuck. Demonetize me. Anyway, hey, thank you. Uh, I, I love getting calls from you all the time, Charlie. You know, you're, and you're one of our most loyal callers, too, as is Kevin, as is Vernon. As and, I'm and, not. And Wayne is now a very loyal caller. He calls every night and hardly says anything, but we're going to, we're going to, next time you call Wayne, we're going to interview you. Uh oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we like having you here, and I'm, I'm glad you uh, joined the, the band, as it were. Tony, <laughs> thank you for joining us, as well as Ray, and of course, uh, another regular of ours, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, Brian Neary. And Alan, <laughs> Alan, thank you. And we'll see over probably some of you on uh, Jack's show. Uh, everybody good wave week, goodbye, yeah. and I'll wave goodbye at you, okay? All right, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Anyway, we're uh, we're through with them, and we're through with you. And Jack is next with the intersection. He'll be here. He'll be taking your calls at uh, 
uh, at, uh, on, on Skype at GabNet Live. I'll see you again on Monday for the pop-up show at 4 o'clock on Facebook. And then again right back here next Wednesday night, 1030 Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, you know what? Tell her I love her. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Everybody.